today I thought I would do you a non-booktube review because I haven't done one of those in quite a while. In fact, I haven't really been individually reviewing books for a long time. I used to really enjoy doing in-depth individual reviews. Um, <clears throat> but for some reason I just haven't, whether I haven't had enough to say about the books I've been reading or I haven't been looking at them in as analytical a way, I don't know. But anyway, I just haven't had a book that I've been desperate to do an individual review on in a long time. Is that something people would be interested in? Let me know down below if you want to see more individual reviews. But anyway, on to the non-booktube review. For those of you who haven't seen one of these before, basically as it sounds, um, non-booktube reviews are just where I talk about books that I haven't personally heard spoken about on booktube. I think as is inevitable from a bookish community, a lot of us talk about the same books and the same books tend to do the rounds at the same time. And I always, you know, it's great to find those books, but I always find it interesting when people talk about books that perhaps aren't spoken about elsewhere on booktube, because I think we're such a small community that I think it's easy to get caught up in certain books without thinking about the other books out there. So anyway, I digress. I will link the rest of this playlist down below. I did it for a year where I did one non-booktube review every month and now I just do them intermittently as in when I ne read a non-booktube book. The book that I'm going to be talking about here is The Flying Dutchman by, and I did practice this before the video but watch me get this wrong, Antli Kudryavitsky. I think. Um, this was kindly sent to me by Glagoslav, who are a publisher whom I have read books with before. Um, they are a really interesting publisher actually. They publish Slavic texts that perhaps have either been banned or haven't been translated or come from countries where you know, easy translation to the UK isn't easy to access. Um, and, and for that reason, they publish some really interesting books and some really interesting books about living in countries that perhaps we don't get a, a point of view from. It, Otherwise, um, for example, I read a book from them um, that was published out of Turkmenistan and I think it was the first or one of the first Turkmenistan books to ever be published in English um, and it was such an interesting view on a country that I'll admit I hadn't really heard of before. Um, so anyway, that's why I enjoy Glagoslav. I will link their website and the link to buy this book down below. Um, sadly, they sent me this a while ago, probably nearly a year ago now, but I'm not going to lie. This year has just, I mean, where's it even, where's it even gone? I, I don't understand. But anyway, um, we're getting to it now. So this is a book which is published from a Moscow-born poet, excuse me while I read the back, um, who is now living in Ireland and he's predominantly, as I say, a poet, but he also writes novels and short stories. It has been translated from Russian by Karol Ermakova. Um, I was a bit surprised in this in that I was wanting to get it read for this review so I was like powering through and it's about 240 pages but when we get to about 150 pages it turns into short stories which I wasn't expecting and was quite a pleasant surprise but anyway um so it's kind of the flying dutchman is in there and then there are about five short stories at the end um no, I'm not going to lie, this was kind of a book of two halves for me, so I think what I'll do is explain what The Flying Dutchman is about. So basically the story itself is about a man who has called himself No One. Um, he is kind of shirking off his past life and kind of going a little bit mad, I think. Um, and we basically follow him when he's living in this isolated I couldn't quite grasp whether he was living in an old ship or whether it was an old house. Um, I think it was an old house, but but his delusions were turning it a little bit shippy, but we'll get into that. Um, so while he's in this house, he is writing a book, The Flying Dutchman, which is about Wagner, I think. Um, and he's writing, this is where I got a bit confused. So there were bits where he was writing directly about Wagner and there were also bits where he was writing about this Flying Dutchman, which was a ship um, and it was kind of a piratey story. And we got snippets of the story he was writing and also obviously followed him um, and it kind of jumps back and forth in time and we kind of look at what brought him here and why he is here and also we start to realise a, that he's not really altogether there and also B, that the police are watching him because of something that happened with a past girlfriend. Um, it's, it was difficult because there were parts of this that I really enjoyed and I think the writing is gorgeous. I'll, I'll read you the first bit because I was instantly like, oh, I'm going to enjoy this. Houses swallow people. They toy with them for a while, then gulp. And when the person quietens down and gazes out of the window, the window dims and the scenery becomes a poorly primed canvas. You can rip through that canvas, 
or you can get caught in its web. So, you know, the writing is gorgeous and you can definitely tell that this is written by a poet. That said, I don't know whether novel writing is his forte. I felt as though the writing was gorgeous, but the plot in itself didn't really come together. Now, I feel reluctant to say that because there were parts of it that were really genius and I love shifting between the writing that he was doing and how that was creeping into his isolated life um, and how his characters were kind of coming to life in his mind and stuff. I think it said some really interesting things about creativity and being a writer and, you know, just general mentality. But it also kind of went off on tangents that I couldn't get behind. Like, there was a bit where we find out what actually happened to the girlfriend. And in that, I thought the characters just weren't very well fleshed. I thought it was very convenient and the revelation came very easily all of a sudden and it was just sort of, oh, okay. Um, and also there were parts in this where it kind of tried to go into philosophical just musings and that didn't really work for me. I felt like it took me out of the story. I don't feel like it added anything. But the base of the story was so good and it was kind of frustrating because there were points where I really, really loved this and it was a definite four star for me. And then there were points where it was more like a two. So I've gone in the middle and it's a three. The short stories I feel I should talk about separately. So like, the short stories felt more natural. They felt like he was in his element writing short stories, which makes sense for a poet. Um, that said, I did also have issues with the short stories to the point where I stopped reading. I think I left one um, because they were really good and I was really enjoying them. But there were definitely points, like especially about women, um, the women characters were just really poorly done. There were really big stereotypes. All of them were kind of moany and the men in the story would kind of make comments like, well, what do you expect from a woman? And, you know, she's just being a typical woman. And there was a lot of that. And it just really grated on me to the point where I did have to put the book down. And the story that that happened within, I was really enjoying. It was about a man who had gone to a writing retreat and it was really good until that point, but that completely spoiled it for me. So it's kind of, uh, it's one of those books that I can't say I loved it because there were things that really stood out for me and really bugged me. That said, I enjoyed the bits that I enjoyed so much. So it was frustrating and it was annoying, but ultimately, I don't know. I, I feel like it might be worth a read if you go into it with these things in mind. But anyway, as I say, <laughs> I will link it down below. It, it's one that's probably going to bug me and I might come back to it at another point and hopefully um, find something more from it. Um, as I say, it, it was fantastic when it was good, but when it was bad, it was bad. There you go. Um, so let me know down below if you have read this or if you have any other non-booktube recommendations that you would like to see me do reviews of. And as I say, let me know if you want to see more individual reviews on this channel and I will see you next time. Bye.